Welcome back to the channel folks and to another one of our guides on the essentials that you need to paint Flames of War vehicles. Certainly if you want to get them looking the way that we get them here on Panzerschiller. In this video we're going to be looking at chipping which is a process which can add a great deal of detail, focus and shape to your miniature but can also be a double edged sword in that if you overdo it or perhaps just put the chips in the wrong place it starts to fall apart, the finished look just doesn't appear right. Your own views or approaches to chipping and scratching on your kits may well be inspired by all the wonderful guides that are out there for scale modelling kits, you know, 135th scale and so on. And it's certainly an inspiration to myself too, but years of experience and having painted so many of these things has taught me that you need a different approach at this scale to get quick and effective results. In skill modelling, the chipping is part of the weathering process, pure and simple. But I find that in the 1-100 scale world, the chipping starts as part of the highlighting process and then grows from there. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. What you can see here is me starting the process on a stug. This is being painted in my normal three-tone camel colours, which are all Tamiya and there's lots of videos out there on the playlist folks to show you how I do this. I won't spend any time showing you the painting of the tank itself. Now, I talked about highlighting, so the first thing I'm going to do is edge highlight. I'm mostly going to be working on the easily accessible edges, therefore what you call the outside of edges, but also any pronounced panel lines that I can draw the brush along easily, you know, without resorting to a fine brush and painting a fine line down the edge, as you'll see later. Now for the longer edges, such as on the individual sheets of the shoes in, on the, the, the back of the hull and, and so on, I'm not painting a solid edge. I'm not going to paint my highlight colour, which by the way is Iraqi sand in this case. I am not going to paint that straight all the way along the edge, because remember, we're doing highlighting here and this will make the edge stand out but we're also doing chipping so we keep that dominant look of the brighter line but it's going to be a broken line so that it's not too dominant and it's not too neon so to speak. So I'm almost bouncing the brush along it's just a, a technique that I've picked up over time just takes a bit of muscle memory so to speak and you're just going to bounce the brush along the edge you're going to make sure that the paint on your brush is dry enough to go on in a solid edge but also not so dry that it's, you're going to have to drag it off the brush so once again that just takes a little bit of practice to get the necessary consistency and flow in your paint. Now you can't go too far wrong at this stage folks because an edge highlight is an edge highlight so to speak but just make sure you're not getting weary as you're going and try to speed up and go faster and faster just to get through the work because that will probably end up in a messy result. The edges not being sharp enough, the paint not being the right consistency, going on too dry, almost like a dry brush and these kind of things. You want to avoid that so if you're feeling weary have a break, come back with the right mindset. Next we're going to get a fine brush and the same Iraqi sand and continue this highlighting and chipping process. We're going to be painting on for instance scratches, you can see me doing some scratches here and th this is where you can definitely overdo it. This is where you just want to be thinking about the scratches are there to give an indication of wear and age and weathering but to break up panels. It helps bring them into focus if those larger flat areas have something going on inside them. In this case, a scratch or some chips, little dots of paint all around too. So that's all you're doing folks. You're not trying to cover the entire thing in scratches. If you have a, a, a typical panel on the shoes for instance, might have only two scratches and then a couple of chips. 
you've got your edges of course, but internally, two scratches, a couple of chips, anything more than that, and you're really going to start making something that looks like it should be in a scrapyard. But remember folks, we're still highlighting. So all those areas, the internal panel lines for instance, uh, tiny little bits of detail that we couldn't reach with the larger brush we were edge highlighting with, we're now going to take our fine brush and we're going to pick out all of those details. Let's go back to those scratches then folks and think about the area that we're working on and where are we going to put those scratches. So the shoes in for instance are going to be in the main horizontal kind of lines uh, because they'll be scratching up against something. Other areas we can be a little bit more creative. Uh, we can think okay so where has for instance the tank bumped up against something or something uh, such as a piece of shrapnel you know ricocheted across the tank and start to build it up from there. So if all these panels, all these little features and hatches, I will toughen up the edge highlighting on certain areas, just painting tiny little blobs, just to expand it so it's almost like a, a chip, and then draw a line out of that. And once again, your paint's got to be right here, folks. If it's too thin, it will be semi-opaque and won't look like a scratch. Remember, when we're applying the Iraqi sand element here, the, the, the lighter hull colour, we're effectively exposing lighter colour paint that has lain protected underneath the weathered surface of the vehicle. Areas of larger wear such as the crew hatches, I'm going to do a little bit more but remember these are tiny little areas too folks so don't go over the top, keep it in scale for that part of the tank and then other areas I'm going to have pretty much a, almost like a, a, a formula how much I'm going to put on, one on the top of a fender, one on the front of a fender where it's angled down, you know that kind of approach so that we're getting enough to break up panels, give us the weathering we want but once again to make it look as though it's operational rather than in a scrapyard. What we're doing here is really going to determine the level of highlighting, the level of scratching and chipping for the finished vehicle. So it's once again very important that we are patient, that if we're feeling weary we just set it aside and come back, reset the mindset and focus on the process we are trying to perfect here. I'll let the video play for a bit here folks, just so you can see what I've been talking about without me yapping away in the background and then we'll come back for the next stage which is going to be the dark scratches, the exposed metal. Having created all the light surface scratches, when I want to put a dark core of exposed metal into some of them, not all of them, but probably the majority of them. I'm going to be using German Camel Black Brown for this. It's um, a look that kind of creates the suggestion of rusted metal, you know, like that's been exposed through a deeper scratch, but doesn't then create an overall rusty look 
because remember, we don't want this to look like it's a scrapyard. So I'm using a very fine brush for this folks because I need to place this dark line in the centre of the very small light chipping line that I've already painted. All the little chips and the little blobs are quite easy to do. That's just a little dot into the centre of them. At this point you should also consider leaving some of the light chipping without a dark core because not every chip, not every scratch is going to have reached the surface metal. And for instance I would do that in particular where the chip or scratch was over, uh, in this case the brown camouflage, the dark, darker camouflage because it stands out quite nicely. If you then give it a darker core it would start to disappear and then you start to lose the balance, you know, it loses the focus, it doesn't do anything. I'm also going to be applying the dark scratch colour to the edges of the panels and all the little other areas of the vehicle because we've got what is basically a light vehicle so giving it a dark edge sounds a bit daft but giving it a dark edge can help make it pop as well. Um, you just got to be careful that you're doing this less in volume, less than the light scratches that you've got on the edges otherwise once again you start to lose the balance. So. As I've been saying before, patience is important here. You can always add more chips, more of the dark chips, if you feel you've not done enough, but it's hard to take it out. It's a bit like adding salt to a recipe. You can always add more if it's needed, but it's hard to deal with it if you put too much in. As before, I'm just going to let the video play now, folks, just so you can see me completing this process. Another approach, and I typically use this only on the largest of vehicles, is sponge chipping. This is where we're going to take a little bit of packing foam and our light chipping colour, not the dark one, we have to do that by brush, but a light chipping colour, and then get the paint at the right consistency so it is going to easily come off at a light touch and the sponge surface will give you lots of little tiny little scratches very quickly and at very little effort. This approach is so easy to get wrong though folks, if you don't get the right consistency of paint or you push too hard with a sponge or you apply the sponge in too many different areas, it can really get out of hand and make it look as though it is something that should be in a scrapyard. And remember, you will still need to do your edge highlights to make all those panels pop, all the hatches and such likes, and you will still need to add the dark, rusty core exposed metal using a brush because you won't be able to get that applied by foam, that's too random. But it is an interesting approach, a different one you maybe want to try and one that you maybe feel is closer to the 135th scale uh, video guides that perhaps have inspired you. 
and that's us done for this video folks i hope you find it useful give you an insight into how we get uh, part of the finished look for our vehicles there's a few pictures coming up now in the slideshow folks so you can see how the chipping looks across a range of different vehicles that's quite a big subject to cover all the potential base colors and chipping colors that you might use but if you've got any questions stick them down in the comments and we will get back to you thanks for watching folks thanks to all the subscribers out there and if you'd like to subscribe please do so because it'll help us get this kind of content out to other people who enjoy the flames of war hobby and modeling at this scale and if you hit the bell button we'll definitely see you all on the next one